Well, with this being um, Pentecost Sunday, I, I appreciate that it happened. The whole reason it happened was that followers of Christ were focused on one thing, and that was the direction of Jesus. Come on. So he said, go and assemble and pray until the Holy Spirit comes. And they were simple believers. They were, many of them had seen signs, wonders, and miracles even before Jesus died because they had listened and obeyed. But on the day of Pentecost, as they assembled together, they leaned in and they became one in their, their cry for the answer. And so they, they were shut in together, were they not? You know, they, by choice, came together to intently lean in to the heart of the Father to get direction as the church was birthed. And one thing I appreciate about Peter, who was selected to be the leader, he had at times been rash, had he not? Had he, you know, had he uh, responded to injustices? Had he lashed out? And rightfully so, we, God is angry at violence. God is angry at these problems that we're still living in today. But by the time the Holy Spirit came and fell upon them, Peter didn't shut up and step back, but he raised his voice, and he raised it with love, and it was unifying, and it draw, drew others there. And as you, I know you realize that right there in that city, it was during a feast, the Feast of Pentecost. Every tribe was represented there at that time. And what did they hear from the outside? They heard the praises of God, and it came from the tongues of unlearned men. Hey, I am an unlearned woman. <laughs> I don't have a, a massive you know, degree, and there's nothing wrong with that. But God delights to demonstrate his love, demonstrates his answer, demonstrate his direction through us. And yes, we are the church. And God himself, through Jesus, said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church shall what shall not prevail against the church and who is the church is it white church black church hispanic church indian church it's his kingdom church and that church is linked together around the world and one of the things my heart has been so encouraged about is that even when we were shut into our, our homes, we know more now than we knew before that church is not four walls. Yes. It's us leaning yes. into the heart of God, letting him direct our thoughts, letting him direct our words, and letting him direct us as we move forward. Yes, raise our voices. Make sure we do. I think God will hold us accountable, but we can see how it can be in love as we embrace Pentecost, as we embrace, embrace receiving the download of the Holy Spirit in this hour. The book of Acts says it seemed good to us and to the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. And, and, you know, um, Tava, one of the things that uh, I think that we need to, again, reiterate, uh, all of us here, and we, we know this, but we need to keep hearing this. You know, the, the Bible says in Romans ten seventeen, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. God right. doesn't write a new Bible every year. Right. Okay? There's a new translation that comes out every year, but God, does, God doesn't write a Bible every single year. He... He has the same identical word, and, and he knows because we, we get new revelation in it every time. But one of the things that we need to understand, we need to understand that Jesus told us that we would know the seasons before his return. Thank you, we Jesus. would know yeah. what is happening before his return. The Apostle Paul put it like this in 2 Timothy, the third chapter. He said, in the last days, and when you look that up in the Greek, the word last days, it literally means the last of the last of days. The, the last of the last of days toward the end of time. And so, uh, so when, when you look at that, he said, in the last days, there will be perilous. That word perilous means violent, grievous, hard to deal with, and hard to bear. He said, this, and then he gives the characteristics of that. But what I want to concentrate on first is this. In Matthew, the 24th chapter. Ooh, you yes, don't know I how I have missed that sound. 
Okay, so, it, so Jesus answered them, and here's what he, they were saying. When is going to be, the, what will be the signs of, of your coming? Jesus answered them and said, take heed, first of all. First thing he says, take heed that no one deceives you. There is a lot of deception in the world today. A lot, and it's growing. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Now watch this, next segment. See that you are not troubled. Wow. Wow. See that you are not troubled. How in the world can you not be troubled when you hear war and rumors of war, <laughs> all kinds of things going on? And, and here's the answer to that. He said, let your hearts not be troubled. He is the peace inside of yes. us. Yes. And we are his children. We got to get a revelation of, again, who we are. But it says this. It says, see that you're not uh, troubled. Why? For all of these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. You know what the word nation there is in the Greek? Ethnos. And the word ethnos means race. So he said race will rise against race. Kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and pestilences. I think we can agree to that. Earthquakes in various places. Did you know what was it uh, three months ago that in Idaho and Utah there were 770 earthquakes in one day? Look it up on the internet. It's right there. 770 in one single day. So I don't know how you get somebody's attention. <laughs> if, if, if you can't understand that or see that. He said, earthquakes in various places, and we're seeing that all. And these are the beginning of sorrows. And that basically means these are the beginning of the birth pains. Coming from one transition to another transition. And so, uh, so and we know, we, we have a member of our church right now, we just got word that has in the hospital giving birth to a baby and we're talking about the contractions and contractions yeah the, <laughs> she's going right now matter of fact contractions are the contractions getting closer and closer but yet they get more painful and and all the ladies up here are going amen to that and he said he said because all of this is beginning of SARS they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Wow. So one of the things it says there is that there is going to be a major hatred of Christianity. So we, we need to see. It's getting real quiet in this house. But thank <laughs> so, you. We're just thinking. So, so it said, you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And many will be offended. Offended at what? Offended at the word of God. Many will be offended. Many will betray one another and will hate one another. That's that word again. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many, and the Amplified says the love of most, will grow cold. Now that's an important statement because lawless, lawlessness will abound. In other words, it says lawlessness is going to increase. So we have here our very distinguished Dr. David Mosier. Is uh, the head of our school of ministry <laughs> who is with us today. But uh, Pastor David, um, the word love there is a real key. Because that is not just ordinary love. Correct. Correct. He's talking about the love of God. That so often, you know, when we're trying to deal with these situations and people use the word love, I was just right. thinking about that yesterday. They use the word love. And their connection is human love right. that's, that's self-seeking, that is putting conditions on people, that is always looking for the highest and the best kind of thing. When God's love is unconditional, it's sacrificial. And I keep thinking as I was watching things, you know, taking place, I was just kept thinking that love, true love, the love of God is the only thing that conquers all of this. Right. But how do, you, how do you say that in the midst of the situation to where people who actually understand what you're saying, what the love of God truly is? And I think it goes back to what Pastor was, was saying you know, at the very beginning is that it's, it's only through us 
that, that we're teaching and sharing the love of God. We're not, we're not just being discipled by the love of God. We're discipling others through the love of God. Because by the time they're breaking into Walmart and breaking into other places, then it's, it's too late to be talking to them in that moment about the love of God. You know, I was watching, as I was watching uh, some of the, the peaceful marches that were going on and just kind of following everything that was happening yesterday, I, I was talking with my family about this last night. I, I was watching people standing in the streets and they were just waiting for someone to tell them what to do. They were just waiting for someone to lead them. Sheep without a shepherd. You could see it on their faces. And, and this proves our point that it's only the love of God. It's only by not only us being discipled, but discipling others wow. that the heart then yes. is changed. Yes. And we've all said this, and I know we're going to say this over and over. It's a heart issue. Yes. And it's only the love of God that changes that heart. And in those moments, it's, it's too late. It's the work that we do. I was thinking, watching all of this, man, we've got a lot of work to do. Yes. We've still got a lot of work to do because it's up to us to teach people, to share, to experience what the love of God truly is mm. that will change people at the heart. Pastor Sam, why don't you pick it up from there? Man, uh, like... We have a really um, amazing opportunity uh, in this time, in this hour, to actually showcase uh, the world actually what they're looking for. Yes. Um, like, just as uh, Pastor uh, David was saying, um, we're the only one on earth carrying the answer. Right. Yes. Like, we're the only one. Like, uh, we were just singing... Uh, 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 oh, we need a move. And in my heart, I'm like, we are the move. Yeah. We are the it's, move. It's, are the it's move. a lot of times I feel like, a lot of times I feel like we're, we're, we're praying to Jesus. We're praying to God and saying, God, move. And he's like, you are the answer. It starts with his church. It's like we are the force on earth that uh, combats the issues and the pains, and we are the healing uh, that administers the, the medicine, which is the gospel. Yeah. Yes. Like, uh, like we, we are. It, uh, it starts Pastor with Sam, us. Let me, let, me, let me throw this in. I'm, I'm just going to read a scripture yes, to verify. Mm -hmm. You know, I always like anytime we make statements, mm -hmm. yeah. we back that up with scripture yes, so we can see. To verify that we are the move. Yeah. We move, God moves. Yeah. Okay. It's just like on the day of Pentecost. The, the, the first thing that Jesus did is he gave them authority. Come on. Yeah. He said, my authority, I give you, go now, because I give you. The first thing he did was give them authority. But then they had to go to the upper room to get the power. Yeah. And power and authority go together. Yeah. But it, 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 with the power of God, with authority, then wow. it, directed by the Holy Spirit, then, then you're not taking, because the word power there is, is, is dynamous, yes. Yes. And, and where we get dynamite, you're not just running all over the place, throwing lightning and throwing, blowing right. things up. Right. You know, you're, you, you are, it's power under control of go. the Holy Spirit. Right. So, so, so here's, what, here's, what, here's what you said, uh, what you just said, and I, I want to read this. It says, so then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up in heaven, sat down at the right hand of God. Now, watch this, verse 20. Mark 16, verse 20. And they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord then, first it was what they did. It was their responsibility. It is our responsibility. Nobody's going to do it for us. Angels can't do it. Nobody can't do it. Jesus is seated, seated at the right hand of the Father. It, it is up to us to do this. So he said, they went out, they, uh, the it went out, preached everywhere. The Lord working with, with them and confirming the word yes. through the accompanying signs. Mm -hmm. and, and so, so, and, and so here, here's something, Pastor Josh. I want you to pick up on this. This has not been prescripted. <laughs> I just, I just got in touch with them this morning really <laughs> and let them know what they we were going to do. We got the notes this morning. But, but, uh, but real quickly in what Pastor Sam was saying, Pastor 
Sam and Pastor David both was talking about the confusion, looking at everybody, looking for somebody to lead them. In Genesis, the first chapter, the Bible says the earth was without form and void, which means that word means chaos, chaos and confusion and darkness. Okay? And the Bible says that the Spirit of God was just hovering. Yeah. Come on. Spirit of God was just hovering. Yeah. But it was not until God spoke, spoke the word. Yeah, he spoke the word, which we know that we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All, all in that picture is that the Holy Spirit was hovering over the chaos. You know, and when, when the Father spoke the word, the Holy Spirit took the word and made it happen. You know, and so what was going through my mind as Pastor Sam was just speaking was like, if not us, then who? Yeah. Right. Come on. Like, we are the ones with the answer. You know, like, we are the ones with the answer um, to the issue at hand here. You know, it was almost like if there was a virus, you know, what we just went, went through. Like, and we all on this panel had, like, the antidote to it, but we all just stayed silent. You know, as the world lost their minds, like, how insane would that be? Yeah, right. And so the church in this issue, we cannot worry about um, eating the eating the, um, the leaven of Herod, which means being politically correct in this hour and not wanting to step on somebody's toes and offend somebody or just whatever that case is, is that we need to speak up, yeah. you know, and give the answer. And the answer is Jesus. Yes. Because this is a sin issue, as we've been saying. This is a heart issue, yeah. you know. And, and, and as amazing as good policies are and, and as amazing as government officials are, they aren't the answer, you know, they, they, they come alongside and help out, you know, because they are God-given things, but Jesus at the end of the day is the answer, because man inside is inherently selfish, you know, and that we will fight to defend ourselves, and we will fight for our own, and um, even if we get there in, um, in the panel, I saw that you put in Galatians 5 in there, you know, where Paul writes, he says, listen, love and serve one another, you know, and I'll end with this. I love it in the Gospels where, um, you know, Jesus is constantly telling the disciples how to be great. You, you know, is that they're all wanting to fight for a place and wanting to fight to be seen and everything like that. And Jesus doesn't condemn them for wanting to be great. He just redefines it. Woo. He says, listen, guys, being, listen, not wanting or, or wanting to be great is amazing. But this is what greatness in the kingdom looks like. You know, it's loving and serving yes, one another. On. Right. Right, and and you know the other thing too, uh, and 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 that's excellent. Ever all of y'all are excellent. So so and the, in, anyway, but but here's here's the thing. We also have to realize we have an enemy. Yes. And it is not us. It's not, it's not us, brother. We do not wrestle with flesh and blood. But at the same time, you've got to realize that flesh and blood is influenced. Either by the spirit of, of Satan or by the spirit of God. That, that's all, because that is Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 1 through 3. Okay, so, and that's the reason we get born again. You know, so we come out of that deception. We come out of the sinful nature. You know, God changes us and, and do that. So the Bible tells us, and Tanya, I want to direct this to you, uh, because you and Pastor Robert both were, uh, were in the military. And, and so, and I, I did find out that you... Did you could outrun him? So that that, that I, we won't go into that, but I, we'll just leave that out there. So anyway, in Second Corinthians, the second chapter, verse eleven, it says Paul said this: "Lest Satan should take advantage of us," which mean wait a minute, which means which means which means he can take advantage of us. He absolutely can. Least he take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And you said something the other day concerning uh, your military experience. Would you share that? Um, yes, sir. I remember um, when I served in the military, you have um, people who are trained to go out and get the intelligence. And so sometimes during the intelligence, you would find out that the enemy was planning to attack you. And that's what we also find in the spiritual realm. We know by, the, by through the Holy Spirit when the enemy is um, planning to attack us. So we have an option. So when I was in the military, you could do one of two things. You can go on the defensive, 
you know, and dig in, and I'm just going to be ready to take it all, and whatever he throws my way, we're going to stand right here, and we're going to take it. Or we can take that intelligence, and you can um, get your team together as one unified team and go on a counterattack. So what you do is you take what he thought he was going to do to you, and you turn it back on him. Because we can't just close our eyes when God um, allows the Holy Spirit to reveal things to us. It does no good for me to know that the Holy Spirit showed me this, and I don't tell my brother and my sister to my left and my right. You know, we don't just keep it to ourselves. So we take the intelligence that we give, that the Holy Spirit gives us, and we get together, and we go on a counterattack and take it to him. Much like you said, move, Pastor Sam. We don't need to sit here and say, oh, I got this. What do I do? No. We get the word in action, and through the word, and through prayer, prayer, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we move out quickly, confidently, and swiftly to defeat the, defeat the enemy because we're already victorious anyway. Yes, amen. And, and that's where, you know, God through Jesus has given us liberty. You know, and, and here's what the Apostle Paul said. He said, and, and we, have, we have a nation that God gave to us. Put it, put it in our hands. Even our forefathers, if you've never read the Mayfla- Mayflower Compact, it is a covenant that our forefathers made with God on these shores when they came. I'm constantly referring to that when I'm praying uh, about our nation. I, I, I bring that back up to God because many times you bring the covenant up and the covenants that were you were made. But listen to this. It says, and, and Paul was talking about this in Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse 13 and 17. He said, for you, brethren... Have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But now listen to what he says. But if you bite and devour... And the word devour there means to strip one of his goods to bring to ruin by infliction of injuries. And it also means to to devour by fire, to utterly consume or destroy one another. So he said, said, if you bite and devour, beware lest you be consumed of one another. And we've got a video that that I want to show you real quickly. And the Bible says that the devil comes, huh? It's, it's what? You need six minutes. Okay, just let me know when the video is ready. We, we got a video to show you. Anyway, in, in, anyway, so he says, if you uh, love your neighbor as yourself, then he says, if you, if you bite and devour uh, one another, beware at least you consume. And you, we have to remember that the Bible says the devil roams about like a roaring lion. It's seeking whom he may devour. So that's amazing that those two come together, Pastor Cam. That, that he said, beware lest you bite, which means you're being influenced yeah. by the enemy. And there's two things here, two things. The Bible says you can either be led by the Spirit or you can be a carnal Christian. Yeah. You can love Jesus with all your heart. But you are led by the flesh. That's right. And in being led by the flesh, you're going to act by the flesh. Mm-hmm. And there's only one thing that comes from through the flesh, and that's destruction. Yeah. It profits nothing. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the things um, that I have really engaged in through all of the stuff that's happening is just trying to have more and more conversations with people. And because I don't, you know, um, something that my wife and I have talked a lot about, and you married people will know, is a lot of times you don't know what someone else is feeling until you ask them. And you don't know what someone else needs until you ask them. You know, and, and sometimes we feel like, sometimes we feel like we're saying something through actions or, or through something, and, and we're just like, well, I just don't understand why, why my wife doesn't know that I need this, or I don't understand why my husband doesn't know that I need this already and everything. And we can feel like that's where conversations continue to push us towards one another. 
And as we're looking at wanting to be unified and as we're looking at not wanting to devour one another and not wanting to bite at one another, we want to make sure that we're engaged in conversations with, ever, with, with each other so that we can know how to love and how to serve one another. I told Miss Vicki the other day and, and Pastor Sam as well that for me, being a white man, I, I felt like I was blind to certain things. You know, and it wasn't until I started having conversations with my brothers and my sisters, because I grew up in covenant love, blissful, multiracial, we love each other in this building. Like, I, that's just, this is the world that I grew up in. I assumed that the rest of the world was like this. That was just my assumption. I was like, everybody loves each other. Everybody, you walk down the street, nobody worries about anything. Everybody loves one another, because that's what we experience. And it wasn't until I started talking to Mama Vicky, Sam, different people in the church and hearing conversations to where I started to go, oh my goodness, the world that I live in is not the world that I think that I live in. And then I started to engage with people and and I started to ask the question, what can I do? What can I do? And just practically as the body of Christ, and I just wanna speak directly to my, you know, to white people right now the best thing that you can do is lend people your ears. Listen first. Ask people their stories before we start going, because you know what the devil does is we start to make all of these assumptions. We start to say things, well, this is the actual problem or this is what's actually going on because that's our perspective, but we never stop to ask people. And whenever we stop to ask people, that's how we stop ourselves from devouring one another because then we start to go, oh my goodness, what you are going through, I had no idea. And then we start to love, and, and I'll tell you what happened to me, love grew, more love, more love. And I thought I had love. I thought I had love. I mean, seriously, and then I, but, and it wasn't that I wasn't, and it, and it wasn't that I wasn't doing good, it's that I went, there's another level of love that God wants for me. There's another level of serving my brothers and sisters that God wants for me. That was birthed out of conversation. How do we change personally? Conversation with God. How do we change in between one another? How do we love one another? Conversation with one another. That's how we breed unity in the body of Christ. Open, open dialogue. And that's great. And so, Pastor John, you and now Mama Vicky. You, 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 Pastor John, you and Mama Vicky. So we have Mama Tava, Mama Vicky here, and Mama Tanya. We're so, honoring the mothers and fathers in this Ta- church. I Come think on, I'm just the auntie. Ta- Tanya said, be, Tanya says, I'm not, not old ready. enough for I'm, that uh, yet. Yeah. I'm Auntie Tanya. Mm-hmm. <laughs> auntie. Those are aunties. So, so, so let me let me ask you this. Okay, so both of you. Been sheltered in, but you also work together. <laughs> in the in the same offices side by side. So let me ask you this. How do y'all not bite and devour one another? I think one of the one of the Vicky's not gonna answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, I've lived with this woman for thirty some years Aww. and you know, one of the things that we have to understand that you're not going to know everything about everyone. There's things that I'm still learning. And it comes through the communication. And that is so vital to be able to seek to be understood and to try to understand, um, you know, where people are coming from. One of the things that really stuck out to me last night, and I'm, I'm just kind of want to share this a little bit, was that we're looking and we're seeing different things that are taking place. And a lot of times when we talk about intercession, part of that is love. It's absolutely love. Because before we would look at our own selves, we would look at our own situations. But when you have the love of God on the inside of your heart, then we cry out for those that we don't even know. Because people don't take the time to really get to know one another, to hear each other's story. If we had time, we can go through this auditorium and we can hear each other's story. And through hearing those stories and those things that we go through, then we're able to better understand. And so what I do, even though that we live together, there are things that I found out about my wife 
And I believe that it's caused us to be closer together. I'm still finding out things about my wife. And that's what we need to do. This is an opportunity for the church, for all of us, to begin to talk, to begin to share. I grew up in a predominantly uh, white culture uh, when we moved as as a young man. And I experienced it from a very young age. But I believe that God was strategically placing me that I can relate to everybody. Yes. Because I've been on both sides of the fence. And the thing is, is that the love of God doesn't look at color. I love what Dr. King said. It's not based on the color of your skin, but the content of your your character. character. And so this is a wonderful opportunity for the church to really be the church, to look beyond. You know, Jesus said, even though we're in this world, we're not a part of this world. And so God is calling us up higher. And in this season, I believe that there is a door opening that we can get true understanding. Those things that weren't spoken about before, God is opening it up so that we can better understand each other. And I just want to add, because I know one of the things that whenever, you know, we get to know each other a little bit more, it's usually some kind of conflict has come up. Right. Wow. Because there's really no reason to dig deeper if there's no nothing there to pull it out. And so one of the the questions um, I've constantly heard is, well, I didn't even know that this was an issue still. I thought that back in Martin Luther King, racism was uh, done with. And, you know, yeah, you kind of do what Pastor Sam did. You kind of laugh because it's like, are you kidding me? But the one explanation that really helped, have you ever been to the ocean or something like that and if you took um and it looks really pretty sometimes you can see the bottom depending on what ocean you're at um and you take a cup and you put water in it and you see all this stuff floating around but after a while it all kind of settles yep that's how racism is yes that's how those things are they everything kind of swirling up together so you don't really see all the different little pieces of ick that's in there until it settles to the bottom. And it stays there. Now, the water at the top is still looking clean, and you might want to drink it. I wouldn't, but you might. (laughs) But then, if something comes, if you pick that glass up and you start to shake it, it all gets caught up in there again. And so you see it all swirling up in there again. And that's when the problems come up. So when those things come up, we have a choice to make. And we have to make the right choice. Because if we don't, then what's going to happen is it's going to settle back down again. It's going to be down there just waiting for an opportunity. And those are the opportunities that the enemy takes. What we're seeing is the enemy taking an opportunity to take and stir everything up because he's hoping that we don't have the tools to now deal with it properly. This is a different time. This is a different season. Yes. Because we see it now swirling and we know what it is. We identify what it is. It it is. And 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 the video that I want to show you is exactly what everybody's been talking about. If first of all, if the world sees us fighting, Jesus is not relevant. Okay? It's just another church, it's just another religion. So when the, ch- when the people see us loving one another and seeing us unified in the midst of all, doesn't mean that we hide from, from the issues. Right. doesn't mean that we don't address it and we don't right. uh, talk about it. We've all been doing that. But what we've been doing, addressing it through the Word of God on social media and, yes. and, what, the, and what the answer is there. But the Bible says the devil's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Who is he looking to devour? If we're biting and fighting and bickering if we're racist and prejudiced in the body of Christ and 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 we're standing against one another just because of the color of our skins guess what's going to happen to us watch this video they're in the fight they don't oh, we, are lucky, we, are lucky, we, are lucky. Oh, we see a fight maybe no? They don't get it. Just wait, just wait. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. 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 Ah, it's over. 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 
Okay, guys. Yeah. That is a prime example of what happens. Pastor Robert, the Bible says that the devil roams about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But before we ever get to that scripture, it says, Peter said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. If we do not get back to humility and putting others first, just like Jesus did, Jesus, Jesus put us first. He didn't put himself first, he put us first. That's the reason he went to the cross. And so he says, if humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, cast your care upon him because he cares for you. Then he discusses, after the humility, then he comes in and says, this is the devil. Then he says, resist him steadfast in faith. You know, what's, what's so powerful about that, Pastor, is that uh, humility starts with me. Hmm. I have to look at myself and do a self-examination. And to make sure that I'm in accordance with what the Bible tells me I should live. You know, I think it was uh, somebody was just talking a few minutes ago about the Facebook posting that was passed. talking about what you put up on Facebook, you got to bring it through the word of God. I have to make a decision, a qualified decision in my own life. That whatever I see in the Bible, regardless of what I've experienced, what I've done, or what somebody has done to me. If the Bible says I should forgive, I have to forgive. Yeah. If the Bible says I should walk in love, I have to walk in love. But all that is birth out of humility. Yes. Because when I'm, you know, I was just reading just the other day in, in my Bible reading in the morning. It said, when I am weak, that's when I'm strong. Yeah. When I understand that my strength comes from the Lord, and it, no matter what's going on around me, I'm going to just keep focused on him. Because go back to Mark, the fourth chapter, Pastor was just talking about it. When the enemy come in for deception, what he does, he, it gets you focused off of the Father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Into yeah. what's going on around you. Distracted. And you get distracted and then all of a sudden, you find yourself involved in everything that's going around. Right. And you speaking like the world and acting like the world. Right. We are from heaven. We are ambassadors yes. from the kingdom. Yeah. We speak what the Father says speak. Yeah. And if you say we walk in love, bless God, if I see you, you acting up, Pastor David talked about it, I ain't going to speak to you in that right then. But later on, if you're able to leave, I got to say, hey, that's not you. You are not should be acting like that. Come on, you're better than that. Yeah. We're the source. And we, the Bible said, the world shall know you by your love for one another. You pick, listen, that's what the world is looking for. And it all starts with humility. I have to make sure that my heart is okay. And it's the reason why the Father said, love the Father first with all your heart, mind, and soul. And then next is love your neighbor as yourself. Because if I love my neighbor as myself, then I'm not going to do anything foolish to them. I'm going to love them. And listen, I don't care what color they are. Yes. I'm going to treat them yes. like I want to be treated. I don't care what color you are. And we have to do that as believers because it's, it's time, folks, to get away from. And here at our church, we address the issues head on. So you folks know that. There are some places, and Martin Luther King said, that Dr. Martin Luther King said this. He said, the most segregated place is Sunday in the churches. Because the people in the church there are some places where they underline, they get involved in the level of Herod. And they promote things that are not the word of God. Right. No, 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 no. We focus on the word of God with all of our heart. Yes. This, is, this is it. This is our authority. This is what we do. Listen, I, I don't have any thoughts that belong to my own. I belong to the thoughts that I get from the word of God. Whatever the word of God say, that's what we do. And, and you Come know, on, one of the main thing, I'm going to get it close here, Pastor. <laughs> one of the main thing that you saw up there, when those two gazelle was out there fighting, and the lion was a way distance off. Everybody else saw it, but nobody warned, warned them. Warned. Well, they took off and ran. Yeah. That's the same strategy that the enemy uses against us. Come on, Pastor Robert. There's chaos all around. Nobody say, hey, stay away from that chaos. And next thing, you're consuming and you're part of the destruction that takes place. Right. No, no, no. I have to take a, I have to humble myself. Call justice what it is. When it's wrong, bless God, we're going to call it out. Yes. Yes. But when it's lawlessness, we're going to call that out too. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 So, so the Apostle Paul, uh, right after he says, if, if you... If you bite and devour, you will consume one another. Then he says, so I say then, verse 16, 
walk in the spirit yes and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh so we're talking here the difference between flesh and lust if we walk in the flesh we're going to pay a price and other people around us are going to pay a price but if we walk in the Spirit, as the Spirit will lead us, guide us, and direct us, He's going to lead us according to the will of God, according to the Word of God. And here's, here's what we have to deal with. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, fights against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one another. The Bible tells us that we can be angry but sin not. Yes. There, listen, I get angry at in the injustice. I get angry at lawlessness. Matter of fact, if you read Hebrews, the first chapter, I think it's uh, verse 7, 8 in there, and it says this. It says, Jesus loved righteousness, but he hated lawlessness, yes. which is sin. Yes. He hates that, yes. and, and God hates that. So it's, it's, it's an affront to his character, to his holiness. It's what put Jesus on the cross. But it, it boils down to this. We are the ones that must stay in unity. Come on. We are the ones that must walk yes. in love according to the Word of God. And where does that happen? It happens and it did not happen even with the disciples until the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Until the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But what did the outpouring of the Holy Spirit give them during one of the toughest hardest most vicious times roman times it was there the holy spirit gave them the boldness yes to speak the word of god yes gave them the boldness to be witnesses <clears throat> even if it cost them their lives they were witnesses of the love of god and that's exactly what god is calling us uh to do uh today i just want to i, I want to say to each and every one of you that are viewing us every one of us that are sitting up here this is not something that we're just putting on. No. This, we are one. Here we are. Th 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 we are one together. We are hearts together. We love one another. And, and, and that's not just a cliche. That is a true heart given uh, answer to that. That we love one another. And, and so th this church, uh, 29 years, I... I, I I wept 29 years that we when uh, 29 years ago when we came and came in here. God's the one who sent us here, and our first prayer was our first prayer: give us a church that looks like heaven. And I'm gonna tell you something: when you pray something like that, you have no idea what you're praying. <laughs> you have no idea what 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 it, what is what's going to take place, or what you're going to go through, or what you have to face uh, in things uh, of that nature. But I know this. This, this, what God put together here, not me, it's what God put together here. It is not put together by the hand of man, the ingenuity of man, uh, uh, the wisdom of man. What was put together here was of God. And to get distracted and to get pulled into the flesh to allow the enemy to come in, and he would love to destroy this. He would love to separate us. He would love for us not to be a lighthouse. And to be a witness to the world that only Jesus can do this. Only Jesus can do this. And so, so I, I want to encourage each and every one of you that we do respond to everything. But we've got to have each other's back. Yes. We've got to stand up for each other. No matter what race we are, uh, we've got to be together. And we've got to show unity. And we've got to show love. And we've got to show harmony in one another. And yes, do we speak out? I've been speaking out. Everybody here has been speaking out. We've all spoken out. And we'll continue. Like Pastor Robert said, we will continue to speak out. But ladies and gentlemen, the answer is Jesus. The answer is Jesus Christ. And that's where we as a church, we have got, it's all hands on deck right now. Yes, Jesus could right. come back at any moment. It is, we, we can no longer be spectators. We have got to be participators. We've got to work together in every area. This is the reason God gave us local churches so that we could come together and work together uh, because that synergy, uh, the sum total of parts can do more than just the individual part. And, and so that's, that's exactly what we're doing. And let me just say this. If you've never received Jesus as the Lord of your life, you, you, let, let me say this. Inside, you are disunified. 
You cannot have unity. You cannot be whole without Jesus Christ. And you say, Pastor, how do I do that? Let me tell you how you do it. Right where you are, you repent of your sin. Father, I repent of my sin. I repent of my sin. I ask you to forgive me in Jesus' name. Then you say, I confess Jesus Christ as Lord of my life. And when you do that, the Spirit of God will come in. God will forgive you of all your sins, and He will make you whole. And He will unify you, spirit, soul, and body. You still have to renew your mind. It's the reason we teach the Word of God. You still have to walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh, because you can do that. Uh, you, don't want, you don't want to allow the enemy to use us. So that's very important. And then the other thing is, right where you are, just raise your hands. And if you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, because Jesus told the disciples, don't you go anywhere unless you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Awesome. Don't go anywhere unless you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. You need the power. Listen, if the disciples needed the power, you need the power. They were already born again, read John 20, 21. They were already born again. Right. Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And then it was, a, a, it, it was distinct from being born again. And, and all you have to, listen, I, I got on my knees, raised my hands and said, in your Father, in my bedroom, Father, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Lord, baptize me in the Holy Spirit just like in the book of Acts. And he did. And out come out of my voice. Call. I just started speaking in tongues. It just started flowing rivers of living water. The Bible says that eternal life is a well. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is rivers. And so, so, so you need those rivers yes. flowing out of you. So just ask the Lord to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Amen. I know we've. We've got to go because we have to turn this uh, for the uh, next service. The media department will be able to get up on the next service. Don't forget, June 7th, next Sunday, uh, wow. we're, we're, we're coming together. And listen, please understand, covenant love, there is no pressure and no condemnation. That's right. And if you want to stay at home and still, because like Tava said, the church, the, the, we are the church, not the building. So if you want to stay home with your family and worship uh, and do that, no please do. Yes. That's what we want you to do. Let's just stay unified together yes. in Amen. the work. Amen. And, Amen. and listen, our methods may be different, but our mission is still the same. Amen. We are still called to reach the world you, with Jesus. the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So don't forget about it. And if you want to wear a mask, Wear a mask. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and if somebody doesn't wear a mask, that's okay with that also. Amen. Because I, I, I've got my mask when I go to the grocery store. I've got, I, I go back and forth, you know, with it. Come on. But, but it's okay. Let's just let love be the underlying foundation yes. and factor uh, on, of church. everything. <laughs> let's, don't, let's don't criticize one another. And let's just, let's just, we, we've got a lot of work to do. Like Pastor David said, we've got a lot of work to do in these last days preparing for the return of Jesus Christ. Jesus. And again, I want to thank each and every one of you uh, for giving. Wow. I want to say God bless you. Continue to give. Continue because, you know, that, that keeps us being able to do and going and reaching out uh, to, to everybody. But the blessing is, is, is for you. It's for God to continue to bless you and to help you uh, uh, in your life and to continue to give. Don't let the enemy talk you out of not giving your tithes and your offerings. Continue to do that. We'll continue to work. Matter of fact, we have been working more. <laughs> Amen. Everybody, amen, amen. It's zooming and, and, and trying to. It's been good. It's been really good. The wisdom of where we're going forward. But anyway, thank you, Covenant Love. Let's walk in love. And yes. uh, if we see you here next week, that's fine. We'll continue to see you right here. Amen. We love you very, very much. God bless you. And let's walk in love. And Jesus is Lord.